is WC Bantamweight Champion Dominic Cruz, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Jake Shields, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Nate the Great Marquardt, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chad Mendes. You're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is uh, Fabio the Mastermind in Hollanda, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Phil, Mr. Wonderful Davis, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Pat Barry, and we're getting hype with Ringside Report Radio. Welcome back. I am Dave Simon. Kevin the Big Tuna McHugh is with me. www.ringsidereport.net is our website. Canada winning silver yesterday. Tanya Verbeek in the 55 kilogram category gets the uh, silver medal after losing that gold medal match to Japan's Yoshida Saori. Saori has now won three straight Olympic golds. To talk about that and everything else going down at the Olympic Games in freestyle wrestling, former Olympian for Team Canada, Mr. David Zilberman. David, welcome back to the show. Hey, how's it going? We're doing very well. How are you? I mean, it must have been uh, a tiring a couple of days with all this wrestling action. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been something else. It's been great to watch all this wrestling. You know, uh, it's been live and fun to you know comment on and. And uh, just kind of analyze everything that's been going on. And as far as um, Tanya Verbeek, let's let's talk about her first. Uh, the silver medal yesterday, uh, losing a very very close match to uh, Japan's Yoshida Saori. Uh, Verbeek now has won three medals, winning a silver in Athens in '04, a bronze in Beijing in 2008. Where does she rank among uh, all time now? Uh, Olympians uh, in wrestling for Canada? Well, she's the most decorated Olympian in Canada for wrestling at this point. There's nobody else that's won as many medals as she has. So she, she's one of the top. So she's number one, right? Yeah, that's, that's it. And, uh, you know, what What did you think going into that match uh, with the Saori, knowing that she had won gold, in two straight Olympics prior, she's going into the gold medal match. She must have been heavily favored going into that. I mean, what what was your thought process going in? Did you think that Tanya had a shot to, to win against Saori, or did you kind of expect what we saw yesterday? Well, they've wrestled each other so many times in the past, and actually last year at the World Championships, it was the closest it had ever been, and there was a lot of controversy behind it because the referees gave out a caution point, and it was one of the only caution points they gave in the tournament, and they, they gave it against Tanya. And uh, I thought this tournament, this finals, was if there was any time to beat her, it was this time because um, Yoshida had tons of pressure on her. Because one of the quotes that she had before the games was, if I don't win this third, this third gold, everything I had, I've done up until now would have been a waste. So that mindset, you know, speaks to me in two ways. One, that she feels that she has to win, and two, that she doesn't want to lose. So that's that's a very very high pressure uh, situation going in. You know. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, uh, a tough matchup, and I mean, uh, Yoshida though. She stands up to the pressure. She seems uh, very, very tough. As uh, I mean, crazy media attention. You saw all those photographers all around her from Japan. She must be uh, a big, big star in her home country. Oh yeah, she she's a solid wrestler. Uh, she her her game plan. It, it, it's been the same for many years, and and I called it as soon as it went, as soon as it happened, because what happens is she waits till the about one minute and twenty seconds into the round. And then she just goes after the, her opponent. And, and she knows what she has to do against Tanya. And uh, just like that, at a minute 30, she started attacking, and she scored when she wanted. And, you know, people look at the scores, and they say, oh, 1-0, one, zero, one, zero, really close. But when you really watch the match, you really see who's in control. 
I, I thought the strategy should have been different, but hey, you know what? It's, it's uh, easier said than done going into a final match at the Olympics like that. What What do you think that maybe uh, she could have done differently? What would you have liked to seen uh, Tanya do instead? Well, you, you know, it's, the coaches have have their strategies going in, and yeah. uh, I, I'm looking from the outside. I'm, but like I said, I, it, it's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. But personally, I would have just. I mean, I, if I was her, I've already lost to her. At this point, I would just go after her and just attack and attack. Even if I lost the first round, mm-hmm. I mean, okay, I lost the first round, but maybe I can throw her off her game. Maybe I can get her hesitating more. Maybe I can get her more tired. Because, like I said, her strategy is the same every time. A minute 30, that's when she starts attacking. So just really pour the pressure on, really go after her, really get her off her game. And maybe something will happen. Who knows? Yeah, and uh, it, it seemed like watching Martine Dugrenier in her bronze medal match uh, against the Mongolian wrestler, um, that that was kind of her strategy. She seemed very aggressive and, uh, you know, attacking a lot. And it was, you know, really interesting to watch. But she just, you know, little things, a split-second timing, and, and things didn't go her way. Yeah, absolutely. And with the Mongolian wrestler, they they have a very unique style of wrestling. It's very uh, it, it's mixed with a lot of throws, a lot of foot sweeps, mm-hmm. a lot of counters. Very unorthodox style of wrestling. Uh, her and I both had the chance to go to Mongolia in 2006 for the uh, World University Championships, and and we got to, we stayed for two weeks for a training camp there. And it's just such a different approach to the sport. Uh, very, very interesting. Like I said, with the foot sweeps and the throws and the counters, it, there's there's a lot of judo involved. And hmm. um, so when she took the leg, there was hesitation because the Mongolian was looking for a counter every time. So Martine was really, really uh, hesitating. It was uh, it was really showing during the match. And have you spoken to her since? I mean, that it's got to be a uh, a tough loss for. Her. So close uh, to taking home a medal. Yeah, I haven't talked to her yet. She she should be home within the next few days. So we're gonna we're gonna be able to sit down and talk. And I I, I know she's disappointed. And I mean, uh, we're all just so proud of her with everything that she's done. I mean, three world titles, three world silver medals, world university champion, two twice fifth at the Olympics. I mean. Just an outstanding career, an outstanding athlete, a great person. You know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, what a disappointment!" What a disappointment! But people don't just don't understand everything that goes into the preparation and 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 the emotions and the injuries, everything that's involved. So there's a lot of background noise that people don't know about. And it's so tough. I mean, just watching so much of this wrestling over the past couple of days, it all comes down to. No, four minutes. I mean, it's it's so short. It's so quick. Um, no one wants to make a mistake. No one wants to open themselves up too much. It's such a high level. And kind of like what we talked about last week when we were talking about the sport and, and you know how much luck there is involved in it, it really is these split-second uh, timing decisions or, or indecisions that change everything between you know finishing first or finishing absolute last. It's uh, it's it's just it must be so stressful going into one of these situations, knowing you've got four minutes and and it all comes down to that. Right, and and one of the things that a lot of people, you know, in in wrestling and in judo and taekwondo, it's all pretty much the same thing that they're saying. It's like we have one shot. All the other sports pretty much have more than one. Like you have diving, you have different events. Swimming, you have different events. Uh, you know, th- there's there's chances to redeem yourself in yeah. another event. Yeah. Here you just have one shot. You have maybe four minutes. If uh, maybe six minutes, who knows how long the match is? But you know, depending on the draw and and and, and how well you wrestle that day, it's uh, it it makes it very 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 hard to. Uh, of a performance 